So, hi, welcome to Journey to Parenthood with Corey Jacobson. Uh, Jasmine and Tessa are also here. Tessa, Tessa is on the line, and um, Tessa was just saying that she just kind of wanted Corey to talk about a general overview about you know her parenting experience and challenges, and also dealing with you know a child when you can't necessarily pick them up and you know protect them, and just to kind of get some insight. Um, on, on this whole world. And so, uh, Corey, I'm going to let you talk and take it away. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, so, I mean, we were kind of talking about some of the challenges a little bit before. Um, my daughter's a year and a half now, and she's getting to the age where she is mobile and into everything. And it's definitely been the most challenging age so far. And I'm sure it's just going to keep getting more challenging as she's older. Um, but it's definitely getting a little bit harder, um, now as she's a little bit bigger, but she, um, I think the biggest thing is just to find out like what works for each individual because it's not going to be the same for everybody. Um, for example, before we had her, my husband and I talked about, um, not using any form of like physical punishment when it comes to disciplining. Um, for example, like we're not going to do spanking and stuff like that, not because we're against it necessarily, but because I'm not able to do it and we don't want it to be a thing where she knows that I can't do it so she can get away with more than what he does. You know what I mean? So we don't want it to be an unbalanced, um, discipline kind of thing. Um, we both want to be involved and we both want her to know that we're, you know, we're in charge, we mean business. Um, and we're kind of struggling with that a little bit right now because she's starting to push the limits with me a little bit. Um, and we're just trying to kind of work with things on like, you know, how that's going to work, how I'm going to enforce the rules. Um, and I found that a little bit like using like a really stern voice, not yelling, but just like saying no sternly and like telling her to look at me. So it's making eye contact and whatnot. And, She's still a little bit young, so that stuff's not really resonating with her. Um, but it's it's getting there, you know what I mean? Um, and it was a lot easier when she was a newborn where, you know, I could just carry her around or she could lay in her crib or her pack and play, sit in her high chair quietly, you know, stuff like that. And we could play little games together or just talk to her, stuff like that. But now she's bigger and wants to be playing all the time and exploring, getting into things and whatnot it's definitely a little bit more challenging but it's it's a learning process and I think we're doing pretty good so far so that I'm happy with um did you guys have any more questions at all or anything else you wanted me to talk about I mean it's kind of what I was thinking was just you know doing question and answers uh if anybody has anything specific they wanted Um, I can always think of a good question. <laughs> How did you handle breastfeeding? Did um, you... I didn't actually. Is there, was there a reason why or was it? Um, they told me that you have to eat like an extra 500 calories at least per day to be able to keep your supply up. And there was no way that I was going to be able to do that. Not to mention like the physical holding her up every single time she had to eat was going to be really hard. And I just didn't think that that was going to be something I could do. Um, Cause like when we got home from the hospital, I fed her during the day and then Ian would feed her overnight. And that was, that's just what worked for us. And there was no way that I could feed her overnight and every single time during the day. How connected do you feel to Kinley? I mean, they always say that there's like, um, you know, this, it's like, is it, do you, do you, would you say that it's an automatic connection or would you say that it's something that you have to kind of develop? I mean, I don't know. I, it's, I, I don't really know how to phrase it. You know what I mean? I don't know how to. I, I mean, I think that part of it is automatic, but part of it is also something you have to work, work for. Like, 
and it's I think to be honest it's a little bit harder now that she's bigger because she doesn't like she doesn't fit in my lap anymore like if I'm sitting in my chair she doesn't fit like just to sit on my lap whereas when she was an infant she could fit perfectly and I could hold her you know what I mean so we were able to have that closeness but now that she's older and bigger she's always on the go and she doesn't want to just like lay with me anymore so it's a little bit harder and we have to find like different ways to connect and like do stuff together that doesn't necessarily involve like me physically carrying her or holding her but like now she's big enough she moves she'll literally pick up my feet off my footrest and sit down on my footrest so that she can ride over so i mean that's kind of cute to like see the things that she learns like she knows how to move my feet out of her way so she can sit there which is really cute do you think uh, and I don't want to say this in a way that would seem insulting or, you know, it's just really curiosity. Do you feel like she completely understands that you are her mom? Like, do you think that she sees you in that role? Sometimes I wonder. Um, and I don't know if it's just my own insecurities or what, but like, for example, when we're at my parents' house, like she runs to my mom. Like if she's hurt, she goes to my mom. Like, if she falls or whatever, she goes to my mom. Or if she's tired, she goes to my mom. Not me. And it's, like, that kills me. Like, because, like, mm -hmm. um, I'm your mom, not her. Like, and it's really hard, man. It is. And, like, my mom's, like, really hands-on with her. Like, <laughs> she loves, like, picking her up. And so does my dad. Like, they both love holding her and, like, swinging her around and all this stuff. And I'm, like, that's great. And I love that they have that good relationship. Because I never really had that with my grandparents but I'm still her mom and like I don't I don't feel like she gets that same excitement over me you know what I mean and that's really hard do you think that she'll come to she'll come to learn that you know she'll she'll change as she gets older and she's able to reason it out and understand yeah. it I, think I, think so. I feel like yeah. once she's older and like we can talk and stuff and like we can connect like verbally I think that'll make a big difference but I mean, right now, if you try talking to a year and a half old, like having a conversation, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. That's tough. That's got to be really challenging. Yeah, it is. How, how many hours a day would you say you were with her um, when she was like, when she was a newborn? Like, how many, like, how, how much time did you spend like in contact, like holding her? Um, I would hold her for like hours at a time. Like, during the day, like, if I got up, let's say, at 9 in the morning, like, I would get her up and put her in the little carrier that I had, and she'd stay in there, like, all day, almost. Like, obviously, I'd lay her down for, like, a nap and stuff and change her diaper, but she would let me carry her around all day, and, like, I could feed her bottle and stuff, like, right there, and um, she would fall asleep and, like, take naps on me and that and stuff like that, so, like, I would say at least, like, five or six hours of, like, just carrying her around every day, and then... Like, sometimes I'd sit on the couch with her. So, I mean, that would be added on to it, too. So, but we never did um, co-sleeping or anything like that. So, that we never did that. But How did your parents react when you said that you were pregnant and that you were going to, I mean, do you think? Um, my dad cried. In a good way or a yeah. not a good way? No, he would, they were really excited. They didn't, like... I don't think they ever saw us having kids. I just don't think, I mean, it's not that they didn't want it. I just don't think that they really expected it to happen. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if they expected me to get married or anything like that either. So it's like, I think it was like a big surprise. And I think like their relationship with Kinley is a lot stronger because everyone calls her like a miracle baby, which kind of insults me a little bit, but I get where they're coming from. You know what I mean? Okay, Greg, it's good to see you. Hey, it's good to be here. I know you got some kids. I'd love to hear um, some stories about, um, you know, I, uh, so I, I know you and I know that, you know, obviously you've had some, you know, decline in your, your strength over the years. Um, but when your kids were first born, were, were you a lot more independent? Like, what was that like? Was it? Would you say that the disability was noticeable then? I don't, I oh, just. Definitely. Don't know. Yeah. I, I, 
I, I've lost strength over the years, but I was still in a power chair and, you know, uh, I could climb in and out of the chair easier and I can get on and off the couch by myself back then when they were born. But, you know, I've been a chair user ever since they were born. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> um, so that really hasn't been a factor in terms of, they've always known me to be dad, the guy in the wheelchair. You know? <laughs> how, Just, and how, you have three or two, I can't remember. Three. Mm -hmm. Three. And They're, so as far as I, I, it's interesting, it's good to get the father perspective. Um, so what was it like, how was the bonding experience with your kids when they were young? Like, how did they come to learn that you were in charge, that you were like the dom, you know, that you were a, a parent in the dominant sense? Um, I think that there was a lot of closeness that happened between us because I used to ride around with them in, in my lap all the time. Like if I was home, then they would be in my lap. Sometimes both of them would be if I had two boys and then later my daughter came along. So we were really close physically all the time. In fact, I'd let them sit at the computer with me while I played games or whatever. But in terms of them understanding that I'm dad, I mean, I just never really had, it was never really even a question because they didn't know any other sense of dad. That's what they were, what they were born into. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, um, and they never thought of me as being much different. It was when their friends started to come over and see me and say, wow, your dad's in a wheelchair. You know, that's uh, when they started to like understand that I was different, but yet no less of dad than they've ever, you know, they've always thought of me as, as you know. They, and how old are they now? Uh, 22, 21, and eight, gonna be 18. Wow. 17, yeah. Now, here's a weird question. Did they ever do any care for you? Like, did yes. they ever, did they ever, you know, help you with any of that? And was that awkward? Like, what, what, like, how do you, you know, how does that work? People tell me that I'm cruel for this, but I didn't need a service animal because I had service, service humans. <laughs> 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 but no, they helped me all the time you know, doing little things and they always, uh, they always felt like it was, uh, I, I think they always felt like it was a uh, pleasure to help me do some, some things. Like if I needed to pick something up off the floor or whatever. And, and when I was a little bit younger, I could do more by myself. But like lately, they've been helping me do a lot more, you know. In fact, my oldest son, Greg, is basically my primary caregiver right now. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. Does, does, is he okay with that? I mean, is he, do you feel like he is... He's cool with it because I'm not putting pressure on him to figure out what he wants to do with himself. You know, he's 22. And so, I mean, he's cool with it for now, but I don't want to, I don't want to restrict his growth either by depending on him. So I need to, you know, be more clear with him that I want him to do his thing, but you know, I appreciate while he's here. So. Do you, I, I have a question for both of you and Corey, I know you, you haven't really gotten to see Kinley like grow, grow yet, but I have this theory that if I were to become a parent that I would have kind of unreasonable expectations for them to do physical things that I couldn't do. Like, like I would be, that they would be like a mini me and I would like be like dance dance like, like I, just, uh, I gotta I gotta like, you're going gymnastics, and then you're gonna go swimming and then you're gonna do that like do you do how like yeah. I'm just wondering about your expectations regarding that and like how do you kind of reason that within yourself does that make sense yeah I think like um I I definitely feel that way um I want to sign Kinley up for pretty much everything we can like there's a soccer program that starts at 18 months <laughs> uh, swimming lessons start at the Y this summer. Yep, she's gonna sign up for that. And uh, let's see, T ball starts in the fall. Yep, she can. And it's like all these things. I'm like, yeah, like I really want her to be involved in all these things. And then it's a little bit, I, I can like justify it a little bit because my husband was always in sports. Like growing up, he did like softball, T ball, soccer, like all this stuff. And he really enjoyed it. So I'm like, well, I mean, it's something they could do together. You know what I mean? That, that's just how I justify it. But I'm like, these are all things like that I wanted to do. So it's like I'm semi-living vicariously through my yeah. 
You know what I mean? But it's like, I don't know. It's, I think it's going to be at the point where it's like, if she really doesn't want to do it, then, you know, she just won't do it. But I'll be a little bit sad. Yeah. See, for me, I always stress to the kids how blessed they were to have healthy bodies. And they started to buy into that at a young age. And so they've always been athletic. Uh-huh. All, three, all three of my kids have great bodies. I mean, they're like models, you know. Um, Donovan is a college football player. He's like 6'1 and almost 200 pounds. And Berkeley's like, my daughter's like 5'10 and she's got a beautiful body. And she was a volleyball player and cheerleader. And my son Greg was a football player as well. And he's really well built. So, I mean, they all, I guess, got the, got the, the memo from me that, hey, you've got a chance to be a healthy individual. And so take, take advantage of that. So they all eat right and work out. And, you know, I just think, uh, you know, I think they appreciate that I um, stress to them that they're lucky, you know, to be healthy. So. Um, I'm so afraid that my kid would just want to sit on the couch and eat all day. <laughs> and I'd be like, oh my God, or I don't know. I just would be, I would be so scared because I, I think living by, I, would you say it's kind of therapeutic as far to watch your kids, like your spawn or whatever? I, I, I'm so bad with all this. See, I have no interest in having children. I, I, I've thought about it. I've kind of played with it. And then I kind, of, I kind of like always kind of go back to my default setting, which is I really shouldn't be a, a mother. And part of the reason I know that is because of the language I use, like spawn. Like I have, to, but anyway, do you find that since you have a child that you like the, living vicariously or like seeing them grow is therapeutic for you and like your disability, like handling your disability. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't feel shame in it either. I mean, you know, I think that they, they see that and that motivates them as well to do better. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, my son Donovan, he plays, he plays football for two (laughs) and he's out there and he wants to, you know, I'm out there with him, you know, and I, I can't watch a game from the stands. I've got to be on the field. So we get that worked out with the coaches up front, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean. Do you think yeah. that puts pressure on them? I think he puts enough pressure on himself. He doesn't, he doesn't, um, I don't think it's possible for any more pressure to be put on them than they put on themselves. I mean, they've, they've got, I mean, Donovan definitely has a dream to be in the NFL and he's doing everything he can to get there now. Well, whether he does or not. You know, I'm, I don't, you know, it's not really the, mo- the most important thing. He gets his degree. That's important to me. And that's but, interesting, too. They not only can learn that their bodies are worth a lot, but that they watch their parents who are basically, you know, we're just our minds. I mean, in a lot yeah. of ways, you know, and then mm-hmm. they can see the value and take, see how far that. So it's kind of neat for them because they get to see, like, how both ends kind of are right. a benefit, you know. Right. Um, but you want to know what mistakes I made? Okay. <laughs> I the the greatest sound in my life I've ever heard is the laughter of my kids. And what I what I the mistake I made was going overboard to make them happy instead of teaching. Sometimes you got to teach with the you know with the, with a stern voice or a no, you know, or uh, uh, you got to be the bad guy. And I was never really one to take that role on very well. So I let them get away with a lot of things that I knew I shouldn't have been doing. You know, I let them overindulge in like video games and, you know, uh, maybe like movie content that was before their time or, you know, um, or using certain words that they shouldn't have been using at the, at that age or whatever. And I think I was, in the back of my mind, I think I was thinking that okay, I might not live long enough to see them get to the point where they, they can become my friends. So I'm going to let them be my friends now, mm. you know, and, uh, you know, that, that, that hurt them all because they're all spoiled brats. <laughs> if they don't get their way, oh, Lord, you know, it's the end of the world if they don't get their way. Well, you know, it's weird because we, you know, we talked about bonding, you know, and, and I think that when you, 
you know, like for me, and I, oh God, please forgive me because I just don't want to hurt it, like say anything insulting. It's really not what I'm intending to do. It's just, so I have two dogs. I realize they're not children. I real I realize that. <laughs> I, I just want to, and my dogs, like I can't feed them and I can't walk them and I can't really do a lot for them. I try, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I kind of suck at it. But they're so bonded to the my roommates and my boyfriends they're very bonded to them and they you know they they when they say hey come here you know the dogs run to them you know mm -hmm. and so a lot of times in order to be there to get their attention to get them to like me i've been giving them treats like i i i do i try to find some way to get them to see me as like a, a factor in their world you know so mm -hmm. i treat them and i and I'm sweet to them and I'm kind. So they always see me as like the, you know, the nice lady in the house that at least is, you know, trying here, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm not ever seen as like the dominant one. And it's, it's hard, you know, um, like I, and I, and Corey was saying a little bit of earlier about how, you know, uh, Kinley runs to her mother and, you know, and, and, and doesn't run to her. And, and I can imagine that would be really hard and just with a spouse involved, like, do you guys, how did it work out? How is it working out with your spouses or it worked out with your spouses? Did you, did they have, did they feel overburdened by everything, by being like having, you know, take on a, a, the, the physical end of the parent role and then also to help take care of you at times? Um, at first, I think so. Um, the first like few months were harder for us just cause like I wasn't feeling well and I needed more help than I normally did. Um, but now that like I'm back to like normal and able to do like everything I used to be able to do and Kinley's more independent, I can help more now than I could before. Like I can, cause she can feed herself now. I can help get it ready for her, like cut up her food or make her a sandwich or whatever it is. Um, and I can get it to her. I can get her her cup, um, stuff like that. But at the beginning, yeah, like, Ian did get really stressed out because he had so much like on his plate. And I think it was important that we found like outside help to help out a little bit, whether it was just like helping us clean up around the house or, you know, help with me or help with her or whatever. Like my mom would help out a lot um, or some of my friends and stuff too. And that, that was really important. Like, cause he definitely did get burned out for a little while there. Yeah. And you, Greg, how did, how did your wife handle it? But I mean, she had her hands full because she had a, you know, a three-year-old and eighteen-month-old at the same time. We had that stroller that had the two, you know, seats in it with the double stroller, so she was always busy, you know, with them. But I, but she enjoyed that. That's what she, you know, that that was her thing is being a mommy. So I don't think it was me taking advantage in any way. So I it's think just, it's I I have to. Would you say it's easier for men, I mean, to do the parents thing than it is. I mean, just, I mean, I know we shouldn't stereotype or put, you know, people into boxes, but. Um, I would say we have our different roles and part of being a dad is being that authoritative, you know, masculine full man figure. And if you are disabled, it's difficult to, you know, to, to come across as that, or you gotta be more creative in terms of that. But in terms of just the physical aspect of, Parenting, I would say, yeah, moms have it a little bit tougher because they've got to, um, you know, it's theoretically in the traditional sense, they're more hands on. But like you said, you know, what is what is the traditional sense today? You know, I mean, a lot of guys are like, you know, moms used to be. <clears throat> hi. So hi, Matt or Mike or Matt, Mike. Um, thanks for coming. <laughs> he's in the chat. So hey, Mike. He said hi. I don't know if his, I don't know if his audio is working. He's muted right now, but okay. Are he's, he's muted? Should I unmute him? If I I can unmute him. Hey. Nice to meet you. You can talk. I think you're unmuted. I don't know if it works, but. No, I guess it's not working. Oh. Are you are you a parent? Oh, this is he said he just wants to listen. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so he's not yeah. current yet. Okay. I um I I wave I go back and forth and back and forth. I feel like I'm I'm too old. I'm at, I'm thirty. I'm gonna be thirty thirty eight this year, and so I gave myself till forty. At forty, I'm I'm shutting the doors. How does your like, No you more after forty, huh? Well, no, no, nothing. I mean, I don't. I mean, there's no, there's no more. It's just none. Yeah, none. <laughs> none. Yeah, I don't. I, I just don't want to end up. I don't know. I think I'm kind of, you know, I'm in one of those at-risk categories right now for having a kid with Downs or other mm. issues, and I don't, I don't. At 40, that would be the time, but, but it's, it's one of those things for me. But I, as I get older, I, my. I don't know. I sometimes I like I said, sometimes I think my clock like ticks, but it's it's a really bad ticking. It's like one of those like the battery dies like a lot on my watch because there are times it's it ticks like there's a faint tick sometimes and then mm -hmm. it goes away. And I can't ever seem to find a man that um is really down to be a parent with me. Mm -hmm. Um I think that they I really think it needs to be both of us that make that decision and it's going to be a lot for him. So I, I don't want to put him in this position where he feels like he's got to do it all, you know, right. and I don't have parents nearby. I'm, I have no support. Um, so I don't have like, they won't have grandparents nearby. I wouldn't, if my mother did live close, I wouldn't want her anywhere near my child. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, right. so I just, and my well, dad is way too selfish to like want to spend a lot of time being a grandparent. So I just, without a lot of support and, you know, I just don't, I think that most of the guys, they meet me and they realize that, you know, this isn't going to be an easy job. And so a lot of the guys I date tend to say like, no kids, no thanks, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so my current boyfriend, he, he's pretty much in the no thanks area mm -hmm. right now. And I don't see us breaking up. So if I hit 40 and there's no change, then I'm probably just going to say that that's just my life. Yeah. But, and I have no, and then people will be like, well, don't you want to adopt or, you know, you could always be a foster parent. And I'm like, no, no, mm -hmm. so I, I don't think it's in me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's understandable. I mean, you know, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that's your lifestyle. Yeah. I wish I, mean, I you know, honestly, sometimes I wish I was free like that. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I have this really cool sticker that I'm going to put on my van. You know, they have those like cartoon stickers that, you know, with the mother and the father and the little kids. Um, well, I, have a, uh -huh. I have a man and a woman and then a big bag of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what you're talking about. So, anyway. I don't know, and I, I, I just figured I'd put that on my minivan. Is it kind of, it's funny. But, um, so how, and also how is it financially, I guess, like, I mean, I guess there's always, every kid, any, anyone, disability or not, has to deal with, you know, the, the cost impact of having a child. Um, but does it make a difference with a disability? Does that, how does that work? Hmm. I don't, I don't really think it does. I mean, kids have the same needs regardless, like, right. you know, food, clothes, diapers, whatever. Um, but did it affect your social security? Like, did you get, did it change the numbers at all or? or I didn't get social security. Huh? I don't get SSI anymore. Okay. Um, because when I got married, we lost that right away. Um, and then uh, it didn't really affect my Medicaid either which i don't know if that's good or bad but um it didn't really change a lot for us i i wonder for the folks that are in ss uh, like ssi or ssd do the do the children also get a check doesn't doesn't that yes. right yes do they? Mm -hmm. yeah I that's kind know. of interesting how what how do you know what the percentage is of that or how that works you get like three hundred dollars a kid per month. Oh wow! Yeah. I mean, for a kid, that's really not that much, but right. it's something. Yeah, it helps. There's Ann, who's 
is um <laughs> what is um so does anybody if you have a question and you'd like to type it in the chat or just ask it at this point i yeah. I can, i'm kind of running out of questions so i'm getting into weird stuff and that's what happens when i'm out of <laughs> You're getting good, like, radio interview experience, Emily. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're getting good broadcasting experience. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, well, I'll ask something. Um, so I'm not, like, kids aren't in my immediate future, but it's something I sort of go back and forth on. Um, and, yeah, like you said, Emily, I guess it'll depend on the guy as well, but I guess I'm just curious, um, like, with my degree of weakness, I'm not going to be able to, like, pick my child up to take care of it or her. Um, And so I guess I'm just wondering as far as, especially maybe when they were younger, um, what your strategies were. Did you always have somebody around to help you? Because I kind of have that fear of, like, being alone with my kid and then something were to happen and I can't pick them up or, or help them. Corey, you want to tell your um, story about the feeding? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, this is actually just like last week. Um, uh-huh. Finley was in her high chair up at the table. This is the one you're talking about, right, Emily? Yeah. Yeah, she was in her high chair up at the table um, and I was sitting at the table with her and Ian went to go run and grab dinner and we've done it you know hundreds of times we've been fine well this time I was sitting here and she starts climbing out of her high chair onto the kitchen and I'm freaking out like oh my god she's gonna fall on her head what's going on and like normally she's buckled in but we forgot and so she starts Uh climbing up on the table by herself and I'm freaking out trying to grab her and I'm not strong enough like she's way stronger than I am She's yeah. laughing the entire time, thinks it's hilarious. And I'm just like, what am I going to do? So I just like, I tried, you know, whatever I could. And obviously I wasn't going to be able to move her, but she got up on the table all the way, grabbed these snacks off the table and climbed <laughs> back into her high chair and sat down and just started eating them. Uh-huh. And like, what happened? And she thought it was hilarious. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm having a heart attack and I'm like, <laughs> girl and she was cracking up and like it was really hard for me not to be like really mad because she looked so cute when she's laughing but I'm like you know I don't know what I would have done had she gotten hurt you know but it's one of those things like now you know we're even more diligent about making sure she's buckled in but Mm -hmm. had she fallen like I had my neighbor's phone number and she said if there's ever an emergency or whatever don't hesitate to call because she's usually home so it's like I'd make sure Mm -hmm. to have my phone or my computer or both. And I have a life alert too. So it's like, I've got oh, okay. ways to get help if something were to happen. Cause I mean, we've been left alone several times and we've been fine. Like now that she's bigger and she's walking, if Ian leaves, I'll put her in her pack and play or buckled into her high chair. So I wish she can't go anywhere, but like I can still get up to her to like give her a cup or play with her and whatnot, but she can't get hurt. You know what I mean? Right. So, and I mean, once she gets a little bit bigger, I think, um, she can be out of it and stuff and like, we'll be okay. But like when she was an infant, like we'd either put her again in her pack and play or her crib or um, I'd have her buckled onto me and I could carry her around and she was safe. So it's like, we did you know, we figured it out. And like, like I said, I always had my phone in case something were to happen. Um, but there's ways you can work around it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, let me just say this. I was always afraid something was going to happen. And you know what? I was right. It did happen. You know, one day I was trying to pick my son up and put him in my lap. And he, the way he did it, he was three years old. The way he would do it is he'd step on my foot plate mm-hmm. and then climb into my chair. But as you probably know already, I drive my, foot, my chair with my foot. Oh, that's right. And the joystick was, you know, usually it's out of the way and, he understood that and didn't never stepped on it. But this one particular time when we were on our back patio <clears throat> with a brick wall around, surrounded by a brick wall, he stepped on the joystick and trying to climb in my lap. Oh, no. And we went full speed 
and smashed into the wall from about eight wow. feet away. <clears throat> and I instinctually stuck my left foot out to kind of minimize the impact, but my foot didn't uh, have any, any, any effect at all of, Im of limiting the impact. And in fact, my foot got shattered and it was broken. Wow. And, uh, but he cried and everything, but he, he was fine, you know, but, um, uh -huh. You're going to have things, things are going to happen. I mean, <clears throat> and that's for any kid. I mean, kids fall yeah. out of trees and they fall out of their bicycles and whatever. I mean, you know, a parent can't protect the kid 24 seven. He's going to fall, break his arm, break his hand, whatever, <laughs> you know? And so we can't let our disabilities, I don't think, stop us from being parents or make us, feel guilty about the things that happen to our kids because they're going to happen to any kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's always going to be things that happen, you know, like I was babysitting with a friend of mine one time and she was put the little kid on the couch and went to go make him a bottle. And I was like, eh, maybe you shouldn't, maybe not leave him on the couch. And she's like, Oh, he'll be fine. And I was like, okay. And then he fell off the couch on his head. He's fine. Mm -hmm. and he off the couch, but I'm like, you know, she was able bodied. She could have, you know, she could have prevented it, I guess. But it was like, you know, it's one of those things like things are going to happen. Kids are resilient, though. Like they, you know, my daughter falls like 50 times a day walking on her own feet. So, mm -hmm. you know, and she's fine. Like she could, she could take a hit. So they're tough, but it's, you know, yeah. They're resilient. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, here's a good question. Um, so before you became a parent, did you, like, did you want that, like, were you very clear on wanting to be a parent? Hmm. Um, I was kind of on the fence. Like, I kind of wanted to, and then for a while I was like, eh, you know, I kind of like being free to like, for us to go do whatever we want to do. But then it just kind of got to the point where I was like, you know, I feel like we're not like a complete family. And we started looking into adoption, which didn't work out. Um, and that was when we really decided like we want to have a kid of our own. So. Okay. And so is there anything that you thought things would be like before you became a parent when then like and then after you became a parent it was it was like you were surprised by or it was different like there was something about it like there was a kind of an assumption that you had before that changed after um, i mean i guess the other i mean it depends kind of like what you mean by that but there's a lot of things that are like i expected to happen like with having a kid and then they just didn't like I thought having a newborn like we'd be up you know every few hours every night for the first year and whatnot and we weren't like Kinley started sleeping through the night at four months old and she still does totally fine so it's like I, I expected to have to do a lot more overnight and whatnot have to deal with a lot more like crying and whatnot but she's a really really good kid like she she listens for the most part pretty well I mean, for the most part, and she doesn't cry a lot. She's always really happy and funny and all this stuff. Like, I know, I guess, like, as a parent, like, going into, you always have expectations of, like, what your kid is going to be like. But then you can't, you never really know, like, how they're actually going to be. It's like, we're still learning new things every day. Um, so, so if someone said, I'm not a parent, should I leave? No, absolutely not. Like you're, you're, <laughs> you know, the point is for us to, to for the non-parents like us to find out about the parent thing and your questions and interests and curiosity is going to help actually. So I'd like it if you, the most you can do is ask any question that comes to mind and they're here to answer. So. Yeah, exactly. So um, don't leave. Don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> um, <sighs> okay. Uh, let me think. Uh, Tess, do you have any more questions? Um, we have 
yeah, I should have thought of some ahead of time. Um, not really specifically, but I guess maybe one thing I'm curious about is, um, like, just from parent friends that I, I have who are able-bodied, for lack of a better term, um, like, they, it, it sounds like kids can be really draining, but, like, it's just a regular work day for me is draining, so then I'm like, well, am I going to have the energy to do everything? Um, do you think that physically or emotionally it takes more from you than it would somebody who didn't have energy? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of subjective, but, um, Greg, you might be able to answer a little bit better, because I think you do more, like, full-time work, um, than I do, so you might be able to answer that a little bit better. Well, I would say that if I didn't have my support systems, meaning my wife while we were married, we were married for nine years, and had kids for about five of those years. And so she was the support system. And then my parents have been a, a real big part of the, the support system for me uh, in raising the kids. So, I mean, obviously without my parents, I wouldn't have been able to do it. There's no way. But yeah. you know, um, so, I mean, if you're trying to have kids and be an independent parent with without supports, I would definitely caution you not to do that or not to think twice right. about it. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I think even for us, like I don't work and Ian is my full-time caregiver, but he's in school mm -hmm. full-time as well. Like, and there's no way we could do it. Just him and I all the time. Like there's no way. Like yeah. Yeah. it's, it's a lot. I mean, not just taking care of her, but like him taking care of me right now. And like, that's, you know, that's our income right now because he's in school. So he can't work full-time. Mm -hmm. it's like it's a lot on just him so it's like if we didn't have like I have a caregiver that comes in two days a week um, when he's in school and she helps me get a lot done around the house and if like when we don't have that it's definitely more on him yeah. and it stresses us out a lot so having a support system is huge whether that's family or caregivers or hired help you know whatever the case may be but mm -hmm. yeah you gotta have support Yes. Um, do so. It's probably it's probably right of me to think that in my situation that it's not a. It's probably not a good idea. Like this. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like I mean, I know probably nobody nobody wants to be like tell anybody not to do it, but. I think that in our case, though, in, in certain situations, like, you would probably, like, if you had to give advice to people would, okay, that's good. There we go. I found my question. Mm -hmm. If you had to give advice to somebody that was thinking about becoming a, um, thinking about becoming a parent, what would you, like, what would you say they need? Or, like, what would be, like, the top five things that they, they you would recommend they need? I'm guessing that, that support, as far as, like, extra a lot of family around would probably wouldn't be one of those things or mm, I don't think that it necessarily has to be family um because of, like for example I have caregivers that I hire privately and when I hire them I always ask you know are you comfortable helping me with my daughter and I don't mean like I and I make sure kind of like to specify like I don't need you to be the parent but I need help with the physical stuff like I need you to put her in her high chair when it's lunchtime or help me change her diaper, you know what I mean? And it's like, it doesn't have to be family, but they're equally as helpful to have like an extra set of hands, you know what I mean? But I guess to answer the first part of your question, I would never, I personally would never like advise you or anyone else like don't do it or do do it because it's a really personal decision. And I had people telling me not to do it, like doctors and stuff. and. I, I had a doctor who told me, like, she was ahead of the clinic at the hospital, like the OB clinic in Denver. And she came into the room when Ian and I were there, and she told him, she said, 
you better be prepared to be a single father because she's not going to make it. Mm. And left. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that was when I was like 30 weeks along and I'm like, so what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, there's nothing I can do now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I, I can't not have mm-hmm. her. Right. Did you know what I mean? Know, I mean, did you, did, I mean, obviously you didn't want it, but did you feel like you were going to, like, did you feel she could be right? Were you, were you nervous? Yeah, like, I, were you I, freaking I, out? I freaked out, you know, and it was. So like, when she came in and she said to Ian, did she say that in front of you? Yes. What the heck? Oh man. Yeah. It was awful. Like my other doctor was in the room and she just came in and said that and left and I never saw her again. And I was like, are you serious? Mm -hmm. And I lost it. I'm like, is this really going to happen? Like I was losing my mind. Like I started bawling and I called my mom right away and I was like, she told me I was going to die. And my you should like, write a letter to her, man. You should write a letter and, and yeah. tell her. I mean, really, that's terrible. Was anybody, else, was anybody else in the room that worked at the hospital that heard her say that? Yeah, Ian was in there and the other doctor, my other OB doctor was in there. Well, that might be why you never saw her again. <laughs> if somebody else heard that. Right? I don't, I mean, but he was equally as awful. Really? Like, after, yeah, there was another appointment when I had with the other doctor. And he's like, well, you do have a lot of problems. So there's that. And I was like, thanks, I guess. I don't know. I mean, he was like, he was a really good doctor. Like he knew his stuff Mm -hmm. and I felt confident in his abilities, but he was an idiot, like socially. Yeah. I don't know. He didn't have a clue how to talk to people, but. I remember when I first moved to Austin, I had this um, gynecologist and he was, he loved high risk pregnancies that's what he wanted to specialize in and so every time i went in he'd be like are you gonna have a baby when are you gonna have a baby i really want to have a baby Uh i'm like no i don't want a baby he's like you should totally have one it was really (laughs) weird (laughs) you should have i wish you had that guy (laughs) yeah seriously i mean i all of my doctors except like one of them were all very negative about everything like i saw like when i first wanted to get pregnant um I was on the depo shot and I needed to like discontinue that so I could get pregnant. And I told my primary doctor about it. And he, he was the one that was like, yeah, you know, like I think you could do it. He's like, it'll be challenging for you, but I think you can do it. And he, he wanted me to get like a special team of doctors to see and whatever. And he's like, I want you to see like this OB doctor first, talk to him about it and then go from there. And I was like, okay. So I went to see this OB for the first time. And he couldn't even do an exam because he didn't know what he was doing. He never worked with someone with, like, different anatomy, you know? And he told me, he's like, you don't have to get a shot, but you need to remain abstinent, okay? Because you don't need to have a child. And I'm like, I'm married. I was like, do you really think I'm going to be abstinent? Are you serious? Uh-huh. And he's like, you need to. It's, it's really important that you don't. And I'm like, okay. He uh-huh. called me a few days later on Sunday on a Sunday and was like I just wanted to know if you were okay with what we talked about and I'm like <laughs> no <laughs> I didn't see him again after that it was really uncomfortable wow. but yeah I've dealt with some interesting doctors but I kind of like I want to go back to the hospital in Denver where that lady like said that to me about like Ian being a single dad or whatever and I want to go there and bring Kinley and be like so I didn't die in case you were wondering, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Because, like, I know that there's risks involved. There's risk for any surgery for anybody. But there's a way to bring it in, you know what I mean? In that way. Wow, I really think you should write her a letter and send her a picture of you and Kinley. I really do. I'm thinking about it. I, I, I mean, it's been almost two years, but I still think about it every once in a while. She scared the crap out of us. Like, that was awful. And, like, then... She had the social worker from the hospital come talk to me and make me sign like a living will and a five wishes paperwork thing or whatever. And I'm like, I get it. Like, I understand why it's important, but you're freaking me out right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Corey, do you feel like um, your pregnancy, I mean, it it sounds like any pregnancy is, difficult physically but um 
do you feel like you, your weakness progressed? Maybe um, I limited movement or something else. During the pregnancy, yes. Um, I felt like I got a little bit weaker and I know towards the end I definitely did, but I feel like I got back to my normal like about six months afterwards and I feel pretty good since. Like during my pregnancy, I definitely lost a little bit um, of strength like just during it though. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. Yeah. But like I feel like I got a lot of that back afterwards so but it did take me a while. Like it took me at least six months to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel a lot better like now and stuff, but it was a little bit scary for me there. Like I was wondering if I was going to get that strength back, you know? Yeah. Um, I wish Casey would have been here. I know that she said, um, that she felt like she lost a little bit of strength during her pregnancy as well. But for the most part, she said she felt fine like afterwards too. So. Mm -hmm. okay. And when did you leave? It was, yeah. I guess she did. Just the parents left. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we kicked her out. It's fine. <laughs> I like these little get-togethers, don't you? I do, too. Yeah. I mean, I never used this program before until yesterday. I'm like, show me how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, I really like it. I think it's a cool way to connect with people. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. This is nice. Yeah. Oh, there is Tess is still there. Okay. Yeah. Um, should we continue, or what do you guys think? I don't know. I mean, if anybody has any other questions or... Oh, you're back. Emily's back. So sorry. I um, I had a phone call. <laughs> oh, it's okay. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I think, thank you guys for coming tonight. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Corey and Greg, for sharing your, your stories and your wisdom. Absolutely. Um, yeah. My pleasure. Was there any, um, just before we go, was there any um, website or anything like that um, that you guys went to or, or did you have any resources that you used? Um, really just other members from the group is really all that I had to go off of. Um, Casey Gaines and then Melissa, um, then Stacy Hoyle Whipperina, um, those three, and then um, there was one more. Oh, Mindy, she was gonna go, but I guess she's not here. Um, I talked to them a lot. Um, they had so much more information than I could find online. Um, that's uh, great. Yeah. That's good. It's good that we are here and we have each other. Um, in the chat box, I put a, um, a link to the feedback form. Um, okay. So obviously, um, if you want to give me some feedback on the Hangout, and um, if you learned anything, if you enjoyed it, if you'll go to another one, it just kind of a, it helps us with our numbers as a nonprofit since we're trying to, um, since we are trying to get some grants and things like that. So um, if you have a chance and can fill it out, that would be appreciative. I'd be appreciative. Uh, Tess, I can, I can PM you. Um, okay the the feedback form on on facebook and you might what it, do you mind me asking what your last name is can you type i just don't i don't recognize you I, you must be like you're like a silent matt so you're matt okay matt Hoyle. 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 sorry oh okay yeah okay well i'm glad you're here and um Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for putting it on for us too. All right. Yeah, thank you guys. All right, no problem. Uh, and tomorrow night is um, the concert going hang out. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Maria. So, okay, well, thanks guys. All right. Have a good night. All right, we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.